morning, morning. Happy Sunday, everyone. Not too good the weather we've had again in the UK at the moment, and I've heard that other places are pretty similar. I think even in Australia they've had some pretty grotty days, even though, you know, they're not heading into winter. Um, I'm going to do for my Sunday makes today some cards, and I'm going to be using Paulette's Poinsettia Party kit, which is in Zibit, and also um, her October Club. Now I've printed off about half of it, and half of it, when you fit in nine pictures per sheet, okay, you print off 18 pages. So that's how many printables you get. You get about 200 a month. So I'm going to talk to you about that in a bit as well. So the first thing I want to do is just show you the kit. Now the kit itself that I'm using, Point Setter Party, is 10 sheets of papers and then you get 12 of embellishments and they are really really pretty they are so lovely I mean I absolutely adore poinsettias these are the papers and obviously with these you can use them sort of like any way you know you can actually use them in any way you'd like they, they work in all four ways which is lovely it really is it's absolutely lovely um, and I, I just thought these were so lovely when I saw them the other day um, in the shop it's that way around yeah so you can see they're quite versatile in that way in themselves and if you put these on the front of a card without anything else just a little message they will make really lovely cards without much effort which I think we all like at this time of year don't we now these two, got a little birdie on this one. So this is directional. You have to use this as well. So you've got a wee bird on this one. This one's got the lovely stag on. Uh, you know, obviously, I absolutely adore stags. I can remember my kids when they were little. We'd go to uh, Bushy Park, right by Hampton Court Palace, and the kids used to chase the deers. Crazy kids, but there you are. <laughs> There's a squirrel. Now onto the embellishments. Now, obviously I print them all the same size. It's easier to show them on here, all the same size. They're all half, half size, you know, A5 size that I print them at. That's a postcard. And there's another pretty postcard there. And then Paulette does these gorgeous stamps. Now you can print them off as a stamp, or you can, you know, obviously use them as cards journaling cards or however you wish to use them now i've not seen film for a wee while you know the actual film for a little while in fact my dad had friends who worked at shepherd and studios and that's in walton on thames and i can remember going around the studios and seeing all the big curls of the film on the floor you know when we used to go around there um it doesn't exist anymore it's now shepherd and studios you which is uh across Walton Bridge into Shepparton and uh, oh lovely 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 memories from there I mean living down there um, obviously right by there we have Harry Webb Motors which of course is Cliff Richard he had his own um, garage uh, that basically did four by fours beautiful beautiful place um, and St George's Hills was not far away in Weybridge and that's where basically, as we put it, the stars lived. They all lived in a big private estate. Well, there were quite a few private estates around there, but St George's Hills was the place. Um, the Beatles used to live on Cavendish Road, which was literally going into St George's Hills. Um, and the likes of Cliff Richard and that all live up there now still to this day. Um, I can remember headbutting poor Cliff Richard in the stomach. Poor child, poor man. We came out of Boots and there was a lot of people. It was very, very busy that particular day. And we came out of Boots and I couldn't find my friends. And I have just swung round really quickly. I was about 13 at the time, but headbutting him right in the stomach. So that's my claim to fame. <laughs> Although, family-wise... Um, my boys, their dad, he's the cousin of Jason Orange from Take That. So, you know, we've got them even closer. And my kitchen table used to belong to Sheena Easton's brother. Yeah. Useless information for a Sunday morning. 
These are lovely, aren't they? Absolutely gorgeous. And of course, a squirrel. I just adore squirrels. I think most people do, don't they? Back to National Lampoon again there. And these are just lovely. And I love the fact that they're so versatile that you can use them in any direction. So you could cut that out. If you've got a page, you can print this off, cut it out, and just put it on like I did with the journaling page last week, you know, to, to write on. And that, these envelopes are lovely. Um, you could actually print these off at the correct size, you know, at full size, and you could actually post your Christmas cards in them, couldn't you? So let me just move that kit. That's the big kit. And then I'll show you some of the cards I've been making. Now, I've done them in two sizes. I've done full size, which, of course, is your um, A4 sheet. I've used an A4 sheet, and then I've done them smaller. Now, I'm hoping you can see this quite well. Now, these are twist cards. Okay, and then to put them down, you just let that go and let that go, and then like this is how you post it. Now, depending on how big this image is, will be depend on how big your envelope that you need. But then you pop it back up and it sits behind here. Now, this is a double one, this is a double twist. Now, you can do the cards with just one on or with two on. Um, and you can also do it that this one faces the same direction as the other one if you want to. Um, but that's the big one. And then I did a little one. Oops, let me just bend so she stands up. Okay, and that's the little one. Okay. Then I've done a completely different style, just a little stand-up easel card. And this one is a big one. Like that. Now this is actually an image of my own that I've got cards here of that I've, I've, I've actually scanned in. And so is this one. This is just a little tiny easel card. Okay. So that's the two styles that I'm going to show you how to do today. Um, those cards, I've had a lot of vintage cards for a long time. And I thought, well, you know, I will actually scan them and see what they turn out like. Um, and I think the earliest I've got is something like 1948, something like that. Most of them go back quite a long way. Um, so it was lovely to, you know, to actually get them out and actually use them today instead of, you know, they've just been sat there for such a long time. And I think we all need to do that. Start looking at what we've got and what will be nice you know to use and i mean it's like the, I, mean, I love the way that they you know they've got the ribbon in to hold this in you know i just think that is just so lovely so that's what i did and they came out really well i was quite surprised they've actually come out absolutely beautiful and that's my light i'm banging on there so i was really really pleased about these so i will try and get them up into etsy at some stage um now I know that they work and they print off beautifully. I thought they'd make up lovely little cards or journaling cards even. Right, let's clear the decks. Right, that's that. Right, the first one I'm going to do is the twist card. Now the twist card, this size, I will measure it and tell you exactly what size this is. It's four inches downwards. Um, by about almost about four and three quarters so it's about four and three quarters by four first thing you do i mean this these were cards already with the pre-score in it um so obviously you've got to double that haven't you so that'll be eight okay so that's eight by four and three quarters okay uh first thing you do is you score a line down the middle it's easier to score a line than to draw a line and then cut along the line. I, I just think it's easier. But by all means, if you find it easier to draw a line, then cut it and rub the foot out afterwards, please do that. So you would just literally cut this straight the way up. Okay, right the way up to the, yeah, right up to the bend, the fold in it. Now to make this bit, remember this inside bit is the bit that's gonna be up against the card. So you bend it back 
and make a fold right to the point onto that score line there and do exactly the same on the other side. You just pull him round, lay him down and fold him down. Okay? And then if you turn him over, you look like you've got a kimono. Okay? So then you know you've got it right. Next thing you do is you just cut these bits off. And this is your mechanism to make them stand up and that's what your cards go against. Like that. So, these are your bits where you're going to stick your cards to. Okay? Now, I went looking and in the kit, there's a lovely page of angels. There's four angels on a page. And another one, this is in the October kit. You also get a page with bells, four lots of bells. And I've used one lot on the cards here. You'll see here I used one of the angels and one of the bells on there. So what I did is I just backed them onto some green card which makes them a bit sturdier, you know, because they're going to go through a bit of rough and tumble when they're, they're put through, you know, when you give, you know, got cards sat around and they sit up there for a month, don't they? So the next bit to do now is this bit here. So you will choose a piece of paper, one of the pieces that you've cut out. Yeah. So you will choose whichever one you wish you're going to use today. I'll use that one to now. And you are going to stick it right up like that. Now the best thing to do is to have the image at the top because when these are stood up, you can then see the image. And if you decide later on, you want to make this a bit shorter, you can make it a bit shorter. It depends on how much embellishment you want to put down here. I've not put a lot of bows and embellishment on mine at the moment because I wanted you to see the basic card. Okay, so this is where you stick your thing. Now this was printed a5 size but not with the little tick on the little tick that, that gives you a bit bigger than than the a5 size so this was printed half See, now i don't normally use print stick i usually use my nouveau but i'm getting a bit low on low on nouveau and for some reason the nouveau takes about three or four weeks to get here and yet the headquarters of nouveau is in wales and that's not that far away we're still on the same continent there aren't we Still in the British Isles. Right, let me just push you right up there. Okay. Now, all these bits that you're cutting off, save, because you can use them for your little standy-up bits. The bits that, that stop the cards from falling over. Which I'll show you in a moment. Just a tiny bit off either side. Now, this time, I've not em embossed like I know. Oh, sorry, not embossed. Put this distressing like I normally do. I've done it with one of those little dobbers because I wanted a different effect this time. I didn't want to have the same effect. So what I've been doing is I've been using the little dobber this time on my finger and just running it down the sides just to give a little faint look of green. I didn't want a, a lot of colour on these because they're already beautifully coloured. It's just enough that it gives you a little bit of a border. So that's all I've done on those this time. Now, the pictures I'll use this time, let's have a look. I've got them just here underneath the papers. So we've got here, we've got the angels, haven't we? Now, to stick these down, make sure this is folded quite well. And you glue this bit. This is the quickest way to do it like this. And so you'll glue this bit. And then when you stick your card on, marry it up right to the corner here and to the bottom of the white card. Okay? And that's how you get it on there really nicely. Because you will see this centerpiece. Okay? 
bells on here. Marry that properly there, and then really push that down, and that's the basis of your card. Okay, that's your base of your card. Now, here on the edges of your paper, and when you're cutting out these out, you'll have bits of scrap. Use these little bits of scrap to make your little stand bits for your, you know, your card to stand on these bits, the standing up bits, which I think I've just stuck down on the bed by mistake. <laughs> oh gosh. Do you know, these cards, the vintage cards that I've got, have that lovely smell of what you used to get cards, you know, you used to buy the cards and they always smelt so pretty. They have that lovely, um, like powder effect, that lovely powdery smell. Isn't that strange? I can't see them because I've definitely had them set here. I'm wondering whether they've dive bombed off the back of the PC. I sincerely hope not. Well, how weird. Okay, well, I'll have to make some more. <laughs> right, I was making cards for Sherry, um, and this is her, she's got Mother Nature out at the moment because she's on the front cover of Glow magazine, okay? And that was the autumn one, and then we did the summer one, and I wanted words, so I actually typed these up on Word. If I bring it down, you can see it better. And I've used the merry bit, the merry Christmas bit. So you don't need to go traveling around the internet looking for wording. Just make your own up. Um, if you make them about 20, because you know they have the, the, the size of the letters that you want, about 20 is really, really good for junk journals and for cards. Um, they work really good at that size. Then you take one of these. I mean, I've not got any crap, scraps here now after I've already cut all my scraps up. And it's this bit that I've been using um, for making my corner bits. So I usually cut the, the, the waste off and then cut them down to size. And these make lovely little stoppers for stopping your cards falling over. Can you see? You do know when I finish this video, I'm going to find them, don't you? <laughs> oh, how strange. Right, let me get some new card out then. So I'll have to get some new card. It's life, isn't it? Everything always tips upside down when you, when you think you're all going to, ah, no, I found them. You're okay. I've not got a waste of a great big piece of green card. I found them. Right, here they are. So that's, that's a bit of relief, isn't it? <laughs> Here we were cutting for about the next three hours because I've already mat and layered these and I thought could save you sitting there watching me cut up. Um, I have got a Word um, file that I've kept with these and they've got about five or six on. So if anybody wants them, just message me and I'll message them over to you. Just, you know, if you email me. Because um, I think Word, it's easier to email Word document than it is to actually um, try and do it in Messenger. At least that's my experience. But then again, if you just seen me yesterday, my Photoshop has been really, really playing up because the weather's been so bad. I'll be so glad when they finally put fibre in. And what was happening was um, it was going round and round in circles, you know, as these things do. And I thought, I can't do this. Anyway, the lovely Cathy had already put the watermark on the harvest one, you know, the full one of the the ladies you know and I thought oh that's wonderful so that was like a relief for me and then um, obviously the girls decided they were going to put the Christmas one up as well so I thought oh my goodness I'll have to do the I better do the Christmas one so I did the Christmas one and I thought I don't want to disturb poor Kathy again I'll 
to see if I can get it done in Word. No problem. Got it done in Word. That, that just went through quite easily. But it was trying to save the photo so that I could then put it on Facebook. So what I kept getting was, obviously you're going to get a Word document, aren't you? And I'm thinking, well, I can't mess about any longer trying to get suss out how to get it to look like a photo so that I can then put it onto Facebook. So I took a photo of my screen. So I popped it up with the work with the um, watermark on and took a photo of my screen. So I thought, right, well, they are. At least they've got it. <laughs> you see, we have to make these shortcuts sometimes. You know, when you get to a certain age, you know, we we didn't learn technology at school. In fact. You know, the, the white telephone, which was the traditional one, and then it came out in other colours, with the receiver that went over the top that you picked up and you had the dial in the front here. My um, father-in-law invented that. So, but yeah, another bit of useless information. <laughs> Amazing the things you come out with when you're having fun playing, isn't it? Okay, I'm organised again. Sorry about that, girls. Right, let's take these little bits off here. Now, when you're putting these stoppers in, you need to get them exactly in the same place on either side so that they're balanced, because otherwise, every time you look at the card, you are going to see that it's not balanced out right. Um, it's just one of those things that will pull your eye. Nobody else will probably notice it, but you will. And... You know, it's like, it's like if you're doing knitting and you've got a little tiny, tiny mistake that not anybody would ever notice, but you know, every time you pick that knitting up, if you don't undo it, it's going to rattle everything out of you and you are going to really be annoyed until you do rip it back and alter it. Now, what I do is I lightly place him on there. And then lightly place the other one on there to try and get them as sort of can you see where you've got the little diamond in there yeah and then try and get them as matched as evenly as i can before i stick it down that way even when you do boot it out of the way you should still be able to get that one back into there it's just so that it looks right in your eye line Okay, now when you want them to stand up, you need to just flatten them down a bit like that, and then they'll stand up. Okay, now the front bit here, I've done just the Merry Christmas. Of course, you can get all your glitters out and your embellishments out, you know, um, anything you like can go on the front of here. I'm just doing it simple today so that you get the technique of actually making this style card. Um, it used to be really, really popular on the craft channel with um, Dawn Wheeler. She used to make quite a few of these, um, and I love them. I just love this style card. Now, when you want to, if you send one of these, I'll tip it up a little bit so you can actually see it properly. When you make, when you send one of these, you just tuck these back down. Okay. Now you can make these images smaller so that it comes in into this size but if you want to write on it you write on the bottom that is the best place to write or the other alternative is is that what you do is you can pop a piece of card on here sorry on here or a piece of paper and write on there but it is so much easier just to write on the bottom okay so that's another that's a small twist card. Obviously, the big one is exactly the same, except that I used the um, big, you know, the A4 piece of paper, folded in it in half. So, like that. That's two of them. Pop them down like that. And then they stand up. So, um, I'll just grab him so I can right over the other side of the bed. <laughs> As I say, it's exactly the same idea, except you're using an A4 sheet of card. Fold it in half, score down the middle, cut straight up, and then do your folds. Okay? 
always make sure when you're doing your fold that you're folding up so that you've got the cut line on here and that you know you're folding it the right way if you do it the wrong way around and you fold it in the wrong direction you can always refold it because nobody's going to see that fold because it's you know it's hidden behind here okay so that's the twist card now the other card this is the one that they call um they call this an easel card which i'm sure some of you have seen easel cards before this i cut out from one of the papers it was a bit of spare and I just cut it out and I've popped some pearl drops around. Now, pearl drops are these things that we get over here and they're really, really liquid drops. They're really quite cheap liquid drops. I usually use Ranger. I've got loads and loads of Ranger and Novo. Um, but the colour that I wanted to use, I had in pearl drops. And it just made it a little bit different. And I'll say this is one of my cards and they are really quick and easy to do. So... Let me just move my other bit of kimono paper out of the way. So this one, I literally just took, the, which is eight, okay, eight by four, this is this time. And I just literally folded that side in. That's all I did, I just folded it in. This is how quick and easy these are, the easel cards. So, the first thing you want to do is you want to decorate this bit. papers I've got left here. Um, I think I like this one, this really quite busy one, that one, that way round. And again, you put it on exactly the same. You just literally just glue it down and pop it in. But this time, remember, the bit of card that's going to be here, that is going to be your focal point for your base, okay? Whereas before, you need it to be the bit that was right at the top because you had the diamond come in there where they made the diamond shape. Okay. So again, let me just cut these off. What I love about this is it's on paper. So it's, you know, you're not wasting a lot of a card. That's it, that's stuck on the... You know why it's stuck on the scissors? That's because I cut the tape with it. Now, again, as I said before, with the dimension tape and all tape, if you haven't got the dimensional tape, get a piece of cardboard, um, just a wee bit of cardboard, cut, cut out the squares and glue that on because it works just as well as the dimensional tape. In fact, sometimes it works better. Now, on the front here, on the big card, I'll get her back in again, just, just in again. Right, what I've done on here, I've put the paper either side okay now this was one of the half sheets you know the a5 size so i cut it in half and popped it either side so there's a bit of a gap in here but you'd never know because you can't see it you can't see that i've actually used it but it just uses up your paper and you haven't got to go worrying about trying to get exactly the right size you might be lucky that the piece of paper you use on here is the right size for fitting on here in fact it probably would do it was just that i did that bit before i did that bit i did it back to front and i made the card otherwise i would have used the other half of this okay but on this on the little ones it depends on what size card you've got and what card you're using now this is one of my own and if i just bend it because it really matches well with the paper. This is one of Paulette's, again, which is absolutely gorgeous. I absolutely love this one. Matches really well with the paper. Now, because there's only a tiny little bit either side, I would just ink that. I wouldn't worry about putting the backing paper behind that because it's so tiny. So I'm using, at the moment, the Nouveau Hybrid. I, li I like the hybrids. Um, because you can do anything with them if you want to watercolor over them you can you know if you want to um anything anything you want to throw at them you can use because you've got that um 
it can be used with either or. Whereas the other inks, you have to sit there and think, well, am I going to watercolour with these? Or am I going to use mar alcohol markers? What am I going to use to use the correct ink? But with those, you don't have to think about it. You just use them. So again, this is where you're going to pop your card on this bit. It's a lot easier to just keep this folded to stick this bit on. got these little bits ready so they can be popped on now these are just two really really easy style cards to make now I'm going to be just doing some more with this kit and I'll do another video in the week sometime now things are sort of quieting down a bit around here um, Levi seemed a bit calmer yesterday he came up um, and uh, you know he, he seemed a little bit better uh, I know they've spoken to the school but the trouble is when it's high school it's very very difficult isn't it because you know the high school bullies once they get you in their grasp it is a very very difficult time that looks slightly squint in fact I had a friend Gillian um, their family was very, very old-fashioned, very old-fashioned, and she used to get picked on a lot. And I, I got really fed up at one stage, so I actually went to the teachers and told them because this poor lass couldn't stand up for herself. And um, they stopped. It just depends, whereas nowadays they're more likely to retaliate even more. So there's another little stand-up card. So it doesn't matter what size you use, you can still do the same style. So we've got the little ones and we've got the big ones. These ones. So that's the big one there. And then we've done that one. I've got cards all over my bed now. And <laughs> he's trying to work out where the, the other one's gone. Now it's hiding underneath the green card. But you know, the big, big piece of green card. So that's the cards. If I just try and tip them up slightly, you can see them a bit better. Okay, so do have a go. Um, it's that time of year when obviously you want to do something that's not going to cost an arm and a leg. Um, because, you know, buying cards nowadays is really, really expensive. Um, I know the mums here, it's not in the other classes. It tends to be nursery and maybe year one and two. The teachers will actually print off a list of, of children in the class. That way you can write cards for all the kids in the class and put them in their, their little trays. Um, but even buying the little, tiny little cards, you know, they cost a lot of money nowadays. So it's worth looking. I've, I've always made all the grandkids cards and my kids cards for them to take to school and everything. And they are appreciated. If somebody knows you've taken a lot of time to go out of your way and make a card, they really love it. So I'm just going to quickly go through Paulette's kit. I'm hoping you can see them okay because obviously the, the light in here is not that good with the outside. It's rather sort of horrible. And if I turn this light on, I think you might find, I don't know if that makes it any better or not, maybe a little bit. Right. So I'm just going to go through. All of these are papers. So they're, you know, full size A4 papers. And then you've got like journaling cards. I mean, look at those two little dots. Can you see them? They would be absolutely beautiful on a card. Absolutely gorgeous. Um, again, I love this one. I have actually printed that one off. We've got a verse here. Uh, Christmas bells. And there's a tag. Now, bear in mind, I've printed these off quite small. So that I can show them all to you. Um, but now this is only, as I say, about half the kit. Now the kit at the moment, um, I th I'm just going to, I'm in Zibit now, so if I just have a look and I'll tell you what the kits are this at the moment. Um, I'm just, I'm just, 
I'm just trying to get underneath to the thingy to tell you to see what the price is because each month it does change the price of the kits change um, so uh, depending on which month you're in um, because obviously it depends how many papers Paulette has done um, just see if I can see it right September Club was 11.66 now I'm just trying to find October Club now I know it was a lot cheaper, the October Club. Let me go up the top. I'm just going to go up big. Sorry, I'm being a bit difficult here, aren't I? Um, browse items. Oh, oh hang on. Uh, right, November Club will be $7.99. So it's less than £7 here. I can see that now. And that will start, obviously, the 1st of November. And what happens with the kits is you get emails every day. Paulette, Paulette messages you with an email three times a day and you get four to five images per email right the way through the month. Now, it's September 11th, 66, because that was a really, really big one. But I cannot see October. Uh, June was £10.50. August was 11th, 66. July was 11.50. Um... They do vary, they do vary a lot, but, um, but what I will say is, by the way, Paulette will be having a uh, sale, you know, a um, Black Friday sale. <laughs> I'm just running down here, sorry, I'm just running down here, see if I can see, now I've got to cookbook. No, I can't actually see the price, but obviously I will link the store, because I don't know about you, but the amount of images that you get... It is just so worth it, really. I don't think that's making much of a job, is it? I think you might be better seeing it. Can you see better like that? I think you probably can. You've got like adverts like this. Okay. And this one looks scotch lad. That's it. Glue, glue flying at me. <laughs> okay, Mr. Prince Nick. Here's the angels. Can you see the angels? Isn't she gorgeous? Imagine this one on a card. Absolutely beautiful. There's just so, so many images. And obviously some of the ones I've used today. Um, and if you like angels, there's a lot of angels. Look at this one. How stunning is that? You know, we've got the birth of Christ and everything. So, I mean, okay, I may not be a Christian, but we still believe in Jesus. And we still believe in the birth of, of Christ. Isn't he lovely? So... You know, um, it's like she's got the gnomes. Look at these gnomes. She's got a load of gnomes this time. I absolutely love the gnomes. Look at them. <laughs> this is the one that made me giggle. When they're coming down the hill. I think it should actually be that way around because they're coming down the hill. <laughs> coming straight down the hill. Um, but Paulette does tags in here. Um, envelopes. There's our Santa. You know, there's just so, so much in every one um now the way to store them if you do decide to get a kit one of the monthly kits the way to store them is when you get them they're going to be in zip files so get some headings things like say christmas you know the seasonal holidays uh maybe you want to do winter but you're going to do cats or you're going to do dogs and this type of thing and make some headings and then put them into another file so take them out of the zip files put them into a file with it with a heading and then keep them all together in another file and that way it's so much easier to find what you're actually looking for and look at these numbers and you think this time of day uh we're you know, many are going to be doing their gratitude journals. So you've got some fabulous um, numbers there that you could use. We've still got lots and lots of papers. There's another one of our gnomes. Look, there's enough gnomes in that in here to, to actually make a gnome journal. And there's some more papers. Aren't they lovely? Um, and she's also done quite a few of these like little doilies, which are really lovely as well. Um, and there's another envelope. And I've got a little one with the snowman on his sleigh. So really, you know, it is worth, I mean, I absolutely love this. It is so worth having a look. Um, even if you've only got one 
you know, particularly like this time of year, um, if, you, if you've wanted a lot of fall and a lot of Halloween, then obviously last month's is the one that you would be getting. Um, but I, I have just been amazed. So, but the thing is, you can do it in different ways. You can join right straight away at the beginning of the month, so you then get the emails into your inbox, or you can buy the whole thing when the month is at the end for the same price, and then Paulette will send you through lots and lots of emails. She'll send you something like 10, 15 first off, and then when she knows you've downloaded them all, see the puppy, she will then come along and she will um, send you the rest. She'll say to you, let, let me know when you've downloaded them, and then I'll send you the rest. It's just so it doesn't overwhelm you. How gorgeous is that? And these papers are really, really beautiful. So, um, as I say, I just love these kits. I really do. Now, here, uh, that way around, you might just... I'm not sure. I'm hoping you can see them. These are Christmas words. Um, we've got nipping at your nose, Santa Claus, reindeer, gingerbread house. Um, and she's sort of put them in different ways. Um, ice skating and what ice skating means. And gingerbread and what gingerbread means. Um, a cake made with molasses and flavoured with ginger. That's fancy decoration and especially on a building. And we know what sort of building they go on, don't we? The gingerbread men go on our gingerbread houses. That's another favourite of mine, that one there. Aren't they adorable? And as I say, this is just part of the kit. And that was 18 pages with nine on a page. So, you know, if you actually sat and printed them all off, you would probably need um, half a ream of paper. <laughs> so, it's a lot. Thank you so much for being with me. I'm sorry I got a bit dizzy in the middle somewhere when I was trying to find my bits that I'd lost. Um, and I say, if you want these, um, if you can't get into Word and can't do it, um, that's what it actually says. But obviously you can cut the top bit off and use the Merry Christmas. Um, and I will send you. So just email me or message me on Facebook and I will send them to you. It's a Word document. As I say, I don't know how Word documents work in Messenger. So um, I think it'll probably have to be sent in um, email. But by all means, I will send them over to you. If you've got any questions, by all means, ask me. Um, I will try and help the best I can, <laughs> even if I'm having a dappy Sunday, which I think today is I'm on my dappy day today and I'm not even taking any medication. <laughs> So having a most amazing, blessed Sunday, everybody. Um, and I will be doing more with these, uh, making more cards, because I think a lot of people have maybe done cross-stitch or they've done knitting, but and they've now into journaling, so they may not have actually made cards to hand out. So I'm going to do some more. And if there's any ideas that you would like me to show, by all means, I will do those as well. Thank you, thank you, thank you, everybody. I love you to bits. Um, if you're not a subscriber, could you please subscribe? Because I have got a few that seem to be watching and they're not subscribed yet. You may think that you're subscribed, but you're not, which has happened to me in the past, um, you know, with a friend. <laughs> oh, whoops. <laughs> anyway, thank you, everybody. I'll speak to you all soon. Bye.